This is a blessing we welcome on a first team all WCC selection. He's one of the greatest players in Santa Clara history, and he's now announced he's going to come back to utilize his extra year of eligibility in what could be a record breaking season for Joseph Vrancic. How are you doing, man? I'm doing good, man. How are you? Can't complain. Well, take us through how you're doing because it's been a long offseason so far, long season too, but you've obviously gone through a hip surgery, now getting back and kind of working through that now. Also, you're back on campus, you just mentioned. Coming back with extra year eligibility, like how are you feeling right now with all this going on? Yeah, I feel good. You know, uh, this hip surgery is something that I've been wanting to address for uh, a bit over a year now. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it's, I was at a point where I had to decide what was best for, you know, myself and my career. Um, you know, getting this problem taken care of was, was huge for me. Um, so I'm very blessed and fortunate uh, to be able to come back to Santa Clara, um, you know, keep going strong with basketball, um, you know, uh, keep going, you know, strong in school, get into a good master's program. So um, very lucky, very fortunate. I'm excited to get back out there. So you just mentioned that you've had this kind of hip thing that you've been looking at for over a year now. So you just put together all first team conference selection. So you were even 100 percent playing this past year then? Yeah, it was tough. Uh, you know, I'm not. I'm not one to kind of complain or want to, you know, use excuses or uh, limit myself. Um, so uh, it was definitely throughout the whole year, you know, I was definitely struggling. Uh, there'll be some days where, you know, I could barely even get out of bed. But um, the second I got moving, uh, the second I put on that jersey, second I started practicing, you know, I put all that stuff behind me, uh, just played through the pain. You know, um, there's nothing I'd rather do than, you know, represent Santa Clara. So, you know, a little hip problem um, is not going to get in the way of me. Um, you know, giving it my all and just seeing, you know, what I can do out there. That is interesting because if you go out there now and you have another year of college basketball to go play this year, you obviously just put together 15 points per game, eight rebounds. Like I said, a first team all conference this past year. What do you think you're capable of doing if you're 100% healthy now heading into next year? For sure. You know, my, my main goal for this year is just to win. You know, I'm, I'm, um, I'm so far beyond the personal accolades. Um, you know, I think I've done enough in my career to, um, you know, play professional basketball. So to me, my main goal is to take this team to the next level. Um, that kind of, to me, is what this whole off season is going to be about. This whole season is going to be out of just winning. You know, I'm, I'm going to put myself last. You know, I want every single guy around me um, to feel comfortable, to feel confident. Um, don't want the focus to be on me. I just want everything to be ab- about the team. And, um, you know, with that, I think that um, we're all going to play well. So, I'm not really too worried about what I'm going to do individually. Just I want to make sure that, you know, Santa Clara um, gets to the level where it needs to be at. Absolutely. Well, can I go through your story a little bit to get to this point of what you've now become? Let's head all the way back. You're originally from Canada. I know you also have a Croatian background in you, but I just talked about growing up out there in Canada. What was that like? Yeah, it was, it was definitely uh, fun back in the day. You know, uh, the culture from when I was growing up to now has definitely changed. Um, you know, I, I would consider Canada. Obviously, it's a little, it, it still is a, a hockey country. You know, um, hockey is huge there, but you know, as I kind of developed throughout the years and as I've grown up, um, you know, the culture for basketball totally changed. Um, so, you know, I was lucky to experience, you know, the the, the, the Raptors winning a uh, NBA championship. Um, you're seeing so many Canadian guys in the NBA. I got the privilege of playing with so many, so many of those uh, NBA guys. So just seeing that, being around it, I mean, it's, it's, it's been awesome. Um yeah, but growing up, you know, it's kind of tough uh, finding places to play in, finding gyms to play in. But um, I'm so happy with the way that, you know, Canada's developed into a powerhouse of basketball and I was just continuing to be on the rise. And that's the crazy thing because, like, everyone kind of looks at Canada now and I think USA still has an advantage because of just being around for over a yeah. lot of years. But when you're talking about the upcoming Olympics and even down the road, like, Canada's the only other country besides America that could put together a full roster NBA guy. I think there's 16 or 17 right now in the NBA and – there's tons of guys out there in college too. Like this is all, like you said, it kind of happened the past 10, 15 years. Like it's been a rapid increase to this level. So we're just seeing that you see the guys, I think Wigan is probably one of the bigger guys that first started this, this kind of run, but seeing some C's come out there. Now you see guys like Shay, Nikhil, you see just a list of guys go on. Like what's it like just embracing that and kind of knowing that you're part of this new era of basketball out there. It was awesome. Yeah. You know, I, I got the, the privilege and chance of, you know, playing with Nikhil and Shea on the community national team. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, both those guys are just incredible talents, you know, uh, even better people. Um, so, you know, just seeing that, you know, watching the rise kind of as it's happening and being a part of it, um, you know, I, th- I think it's huge. You know, Santa Clara next year, um, we're going to have six Canadians on the team. <laughs> so, I mean, that's pretty, I don't think it's ever been done before. I think that's pretty impressive. So we're going to have six Canadians and that just goes to show you you know how invested you know our coaches are and coaches around the country um are in the talent 
that that is in Canada. You look at the young guys. Obviously, we see a guy like Josh Primo just came to college. He's probably going to go in NBA now. But guys like are in high school right now, the 2021 class, and you got a big time player in Elijah Fisher up and coming. And you just see like, the future out there. How bright is it for Canada? Oh, it's, it's huge. You know, I, I think that we haven't even went near the apex of, you know, the potential. Um, so many young kids are getting involved at an early age. And I think that's, that hasn't been a trend as of late. You know, even me, I, I tried playing hockey. I wasn't good at it. You know, couldn't really skate, but I attempted it. You know, and a lot of these a lot of these young kids are seeing now that, okay, like basketball is, you know, just as um, fun, just as uh, competitive as hockey is. And, you know, the culture is shifting. Um, you know, guys are really buying into basketball, you know. Um, so just seeing the rise and, you know, seeing how, how much – it's going to keep on going. I mean, I think it's just fascinating. And I, I can't wait to see like where this all ends up. Now, why would you say this whole jump started? Like I know some people might say like, the Vince Carter era, Chris Bosch doing a little bit, then obviously they won the championship. That was only a couple of years ago, but like, what do you think started this? Like why all of a sudden has Canada jumped from pretty much not having any basketball to now being a power producing country? Yeah, it's, 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 that's a tough question. You know, I feel like there's so many um, different, uh, you know, categories and, uh, people that have been a part of it you know I think the biggest thing for me was is um, making sure that the competitiveness the competitiveness level of Canada can match the United States so mm-hmm. instead of me having to go to Wasatch to um, to play at a prep school I can get that same kind of treatment in Canada you know I was able to you know play on a AU team Canada elite you know I was able to you know travel across America and play those high level high, that high level competition so mm-hmm. just I think there's been so many people that it's hard to name count, but I think the older generation has done a great job making basketball a priority and trying to get us to compete, you know, at the highest level. Cause I remember when I was in ninth grade, 10th grade um, in Canada, I was every weekend, I was pretty much in like an AU tournament, you know, so somewhere down in the States. And at that age playing against that competition is huge, you know? So the older gen- Canada basketball doing a great job taking initiative as well, you know, seeing, seeing those guys in the NBA, um, you know, as a kid, kind of like, wow, you know, it's, that's, that's huge for me. Um, so, yeah, I think it was a, a mixture of a bunch of factors. But, um, you know, once you get talent playing at a high level and playing against no competition, it's just easy to build from there. I do believe you're also a dual citizen. Like I mentioned a little bit earlier that your parents are both from Croatia. So kind of take us to that. They're kind of having pride in that another country, too, you have nationality from. What's that like? Yeah, it's awesome. You know, I love, um, I love being Croatian and Canadian. Uh, you know, like you said, I have both passports. Uh, pretty much all of my family um, is from Croatia. So the only people I have in Canada is my mom, dad, and my sister. Uh, and the main language we speak at home is Croatian. So, I mean, there's so much pride into that. You know, it's it's tough uh, when people come up to me and they ask you, where are you from? You know, I, do I say Canada or Croatia? You know, um, but yeah, it's, 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 it's something that, you know, I don't take for granted. Um, I, I try to embrace both cultures as much as possible, take um, as much game and as much style of my hobby from both cultures. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, and just enjoy every every second of it. Now, you obviously you're going to play for Canada. You've done multiple times with the youth level and played in FIBA. Like, have you ever thought about possibly going out there representing Croatia in any way or capacity? Of course, yeah, it's definitely crossed my mind. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's tough to kind of... Um, not want to play for Canada just because Canada, you know, is such a high level. We've done so much for me and I'm so grateful for, you know, everything Canada basketball has done, but also, you know, experiencing the European side and, you know, um, experiencing my family and getting my uh, cousins, aunts, uncles, grandparents, all them to come, you know, watch me play and represent um, Croatia would be huge. So I definitely think it'll be something to consider going down the road. Um, hopefully, um, you know, I get to the level where I can uh, choose. Not sure how it works since I already played for Canada. I'm not sure how it works like legality wise, um, mm-hmm. but you know, my, my goal and my, um, my dream is just to be able to potentially pick, you know, who to represent. And then it'll be a tough decision, probably split me in half, but yeah, I mean, definitely something I thought of growing up as well as well. So for sure. Now I know you're probably your main goal is obviously to play in the NBA someday, but also we know that there's many other opportunities professionally as well. And clearly playing in Croatia, playing in Europe is a huge league as well. How would that be like? Well, if you could get the chance to potentially go play pro back home in Croatia, or even go to play in Europe, and you go to Croatia quite often, yeah. How excited would you be for that opportunity? That's that's huge. I mean, I haven't been able to travel back home and see my family in a very long time. Um, you know, I've dedicated so much to basketball that if you're a, if you're a, 
if you're an athlete and you play basketball at a young age, your summers are basically gone. Uh, mm -hmm. I think we all know that. Um, you know, I'm, I'm at Santa Clara, you know, in the off season. And when I was in high school, I was AU and the national team. And then, you know, there's just so much things going on. So I haven't really got a chance to go down there. But mm -hmm. I mean, getting back to like my roots and my culture and like kind of what I grew up in, I think that would be huge for me. Um, you know, of course, it would suck leaving all my people in the States and Canada behind. But at the same time, you know, I get to experience a beautiful country, you know, beautiful people right by the ocean. Um, I got to see my family. So it's kind of tough to beat that. Uh, so I, I would be extremely fortunate and, and grateful um, to be given that opportunity. So, you know, hopefully in a, in a year from now, um, yeah, I, I, I get the option of, you know, potentially playing professional basketball. Absolutely, man. What kind of got through your high school career that helped create you? We know that obviously, you know, you're eventually going to West Hatch and you create your name out there, you get all your offers and whatnot happens there. But it's going to take us through the overall perspective, like the overall general view of your high school career, the ups and downs of it. Take us through some of the biggest memories from your freshman year all the way to graduating your senior year. For sure. Yeah. So I actually did two years of um, high school in, in Canada. Mm -hmm. um, so I went to a small high school, you know, it, it was an art school. Um, you know, I had a really, really good head coach. Uh, I, I owe him a lot. Um, so, so that, that to me was, was a lot of fun. And then I got, uh, recruited, um, by a coach named Gina Morgan at Wasatch. Uh, he, he saw me at a AU tournament. Um, and he told me and another one of my teammates, his name was Jeff, uh, to, um, you know, go to Santa Clara. And to me, the second he started talking to me, I was like, I'm 15. I want to take my talent to the next level. Um, you know, why not? Like, let's, let's try this thing out. So, parents kind of shipped me off to Utah at a young age. Um, that first year was tough. You know, I, I was a young guy, didn't lift a weight before in my life. I had, a, I was with a bunch of 17, 18 year olds who were throwing around weights like it was nothing. So, you know, I remember like after the weight room, I used to go back to my room crying just cause you know, I couldn't lift weights. Like I, I, I didn't fit in, you know? Um, but then, but then you, you, you kind of get used to it. You know, you have to kind of, it kind of built like a, a thick layer of skin. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it brought out a competitive nature in me that, you know, I needed and that, you know, I still have today. So I'm, I'm really grateful for that. Um, and then, you know, I ended up starting uh, as a sophomore, you know, I got pulled out the rotation, um, I think halfway through the year, I think he was trying to send a message, which honestly, I think like when he pulled me out the lineup and then the next game, he put me back in. I think that probably might've been like the biggest turning point in my career, uh, just because I had so much like drive and um, ambition to never feel like that way again. Um, and then unfortunately that summer, uh, the head coach passed away. Um, so that, that was devastating. I mean, he was honestly, I only, I only knew him for a year, a year and a half. Um, he was honestly one of the greatest men I met in my life. I owe him so much basketball success. I can't even put into words, um, you know, how, how good he was to me. Um, but then, you know, my junior and senior year, um, everything kind of started going uphill. You know, our team ended up top 10 in the nation both years. Um, we qualified for the uh, Geico, uh, it's called Geico Nationals now, I think, but back then it was Bix Nationals. Back-to-back uh, -back years, uh, we were beating, you know, top 25 teams at their home courts. Um, so, you know, that whole kind of experience was wild to me, just being able to, you know, play at such a high level. Um, you know, every weekend we were in a playing, uh, playing at a different tournament. So, you know, as a high school kid, it was just, it was just overwhelming. Um, but it was, it was awesome at the same time, you know. You know I love playing basketball. Um, I would change that aspect, you know, for the world. And I got to do it every day. And to me, that was huge. And that's why, you know, I think I am the player I am now. So if going all the way back when you first were starting high school basketball and just going to high school out there in Canada, like if I would have came and told you that, you know, you're eventually going to be a guy that's going to go have a great career at what is now known today as a very well-known prep score at West Ash. And eventually you're going to go through and you're, you're going to get ranked in the rankings to some degree. Like you're going to be a name that people know. We get a ton of offers. You're gonna be able to go to Santa Clara and live out the career you've now lived out so far. Like, could you ever have seen that in your future at that point in time? I wouldn't. I remember um, I was I played on like a small like rep team uh, called Tobacco Thunder, mm -hmm. and uh, I remember texting the guys like, "Hey, like, what, what if I don't make it next year? Like, what what, what if I get cut?" <laughs> uh, and I was in like grade nine or ten. Um, I just remember like not having the most confidence, but you know, I always believed in myself. You know, I always said that, listen, I'm going to just keep on playing basketball, keep on playing as hard as I can. If I'm not good enough, I'm not good enough. But, you know, I'm never going to stop trying. Um, and then I was able to just, you know, compete, move up the ladder, you know, little by little. You know, there was no major leaps. I didn't go from 
um, doing going from scoring zero points a game to scoring 20 points a game. You know, I, I had to slowly build, get better, better year by year. Um, so I, and I keep on intending to climb, climb the ladder, you know, the, my progression in basketball uh, is never going to stop. You know, I hope to continue to rise. Um, but yeah, if you were to tell me that as a kid, I would probably shake my head and laugh at you. Um, but Hey, here we are now. So nothing, nothing to complain about. So when would you say the D1 dream came into play for you? Like when did you start saying, you know, I could actually play this well past high school. I can play at the collegiate level and become a really good college player too. Like when did that kind of become a reality? And when did you start believing in that? For sure. Well, I think um, after my grade 10 year, right before I went to Wasatch, I think uh, University of Columbia uh, offered me and I was really young. And then I remember telling my mom, I'm like, uh, you're not going to pay for my college. Like my, my mission for you is to not pay for my college. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think I was about 14 or 15. I can't remember exactly what age, but early high school, you know, I, uh, I told myself that, you know, if, if I'm at this age, um, playing the way I'm playing and I'm able to, you know, get a, a scholarship to, you know, a school like Columbia, mm -hmm. um, then I think I'll be able to play at a high level. So from then on, it was just nonstop work, nonstop grind uh, to get me where I am. And now I said earlier, like, what's that just now known as one of the more well-regarded prep schools in the country, but, like, you kind of were part of making them who they are today. You brought them to the Geico teams. Like, you kind of helped really part of those teams that made them the big brand that they are today. So seeing the evolution of them now, where you see them year in, year out now, now they're a top five team heading into the year in pretty much every season. What's, like, looking back at that and seeing how they've kind of become what they are now? It's awesome. Seriously, it's just, uh, you know, all the um, – the faculty, the administration, you know, the athletic director, um, all those guys that, you know, were there for the whole time, you know, I'm so happy for them. They put in so much effort, so much work. Um, this was all uh, the vision that, that Gino had before he passed away. You know, his, his, his goal was to get us to a, uh, the national level, to be a national powerhouse. Um, and we were able to do that. And, you know, just seeing that and being a part of it in the early stages is huge. You know, I'm so happy I was able to, you know, take the program and, um, live out, you know, Gino's dreams and, and, and help um, the program get to where it needs to be because, you know, Wasatch, I think, is going to be a powerhouse for a long time. Um, I don't see anyone, you know, stopping them. And, um, yeah, the next stop is a national championship. So, for sure. Well, then that very first year, you get to be teammates with another guy, I believe, from Canada, too. And, you know, it's obviously foreign dynamic duo for a couple of years out there and Kobe, who he's had a great collegiate career, too, now. But what's like, how do you just kind of form that dynamic duo? And what's it been like seeing the way his career has not panned out over the past few years? Yeah, you know, Wasatch was a Canada powerhouse. You know, I remember, I remember my junior year, I think everyone in the starting lineup was Canadian. Um, and that, that was crazy, you know, but you know, Kobe, one of those guys that, you know, I don't think anyone can outwork him. Uh, just, you know, the, the amount of things I learned from him, you know, I can't, every time I see him, you know, I, I can't thank him endlessly because he just brought out this edge in me and this side of me that I didn't know I had. And for that, you know, I'm extremely grateful. Um, but yeah, he's, he's, he's a smart player. You know, he, he demands a lot, but nothing unreasonable, you know, and as, as a leader um, and as the captain of the team, which he was back then, you know, that's what you expect from him, you know? So he, he put, you know, a heavy burden on my shoulders, but he knew I could do it. Um, and I knew I could do it. So, you know, we, we got along in that aspect. Um, you know, we just worked hard every day and we want, we both wanted to win. So when you get something like that, then that's all that really matters. Um, so he's great. You know, he's, he had a great career as well. Um, I think he might be preseason, if not first team all conference uh, in the big sky, you know, where, where he's going out to Weaver state. Um, so I'm just really happy for him. You know, I'm grateful. And uh, yeah, we, we had a really good run. So when you get to go up against a guy that you played with before at Wasatch or just, you know, from Canada, like, what are those games like if you ever have got to go against one of your former teammates or former friends? Yeah, so I actually played uh, one of them last year. Uh, and it's crazy because, you know, when you go to a school like Wasatch, it's so small. Um, you got 300 kids there. And you know that you spend 95% of the time with the basketball team. Um, and so he was actually my roommate. His name was uh, Damian Squire. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we, we played him um, last year in our cable car classic. And I think we only won by one. But it was a crazy game. Um, I remember the game before I had, a, I had a really, really big game. And then like their whole game plan was kind of to like get me out of it, like get me in foul trouble. Um, and like the whole time, like during the game, we were just talking back and forth. Um, thankfully we won or else, you know, I probably wouldn't be as happy telling the story. 
Um, but, you know, it was just good to see him. Uh, you know, all the memories, all the, you know, the joys of winning, all the excitement of being a part of Wasatch kind of came back. Um, like I said, we couldn't stop talking to each other on the foul line. You know, we, we gave a hug after the game, which was at the time extremely frowned upon because of COVID. But, you know, when when you're that close with someone and you spend that much time, you know, with someone in an environment like that, um, it kind of was a no brainer. Uh, so, yeah, just just being able to see my guys. I mean, that was it is, it is huge. So that you need to make the big jump. You go 29 four. As you said, you become a top ranked team in the country. Go like you said, at the time, big championship games, and you also had another big time player, Emmanuel, that's also had a great career so far too. But what was that addition like? How much did Emmanuel help the team? And just take us through that year of being able to become truly a national powerhouse now. Yeah, so it, it it was tough. I mean that 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 junior year, that was the make or break year. You know, we had so much talent, mm -hmm. um, so many players that it was just I would like I can't tell you how competitive. Um, how like high spirited those practices were because anyone can get a bucket. Um, if you put five on five, five best players, five worst players, however you want five starters against five bench, the bench could beat the starters five times out of 10. It was just, that team was just super talented. Um, and just being able to see that in practice and just experience that every day. I mean, we used to play five on five on our own. Like coaches, coaches would almost tell us to stop playing five on five just because of how like competitive and how intense those games were. So just, you know, molding in all of that talent, you know, having E-Man um, come in, you know, he, he was a high talented recruit, you know, he kind of, he, he, he had a really good, um, well, my senior year was his senior year as well. Um, and he had a big year then, but his junior year, he was just trying to find himself, you know, he was really, he was younger than us. Um, so he tried just to find himself, but I mean, I thought he did phenomenal. You know, he, he ended up starting for us, you know, playing big minutes, making big shots, making big plays. Um, and you know, he, he's, he's a winner, you know, everyone on that team was a winner. And I think that's really important. And that's why you know, we were able to be successful. And then your senior year is really your huge year as well. You end up coming away winning Utah man athlete of the year. You guys have a phenomenal season two, 23 and five. But take us to the, like, what allowed you to jump to that level? Like you start having 20 points and 10 rebounds. You become this big time player now. Like why did you take your game to that massive a jump to your first senior year? Yeah, uh, well, I think the main reason why is that, you know, the seniors that left were our two leading scorers. So mm -hmm. kind of there's a there's a position for me to fill. You know, there's a role that I needed to fill. Mm -hmm. um, and also, you know, my main uh, my main goal for that year was to make the tournament as well. I think that um, no one really thought we were going to make it that year. We didn't have necessarily all the talent, all the five star recruits. Um, so, you know, my main mission was just to win at all costs. You know, I. Every day in practice, you know, I, I gave it my all. You know, the big thing with, with me is that every time I step on the court, um, it's all or nothing. So, you know, I always put my all on, my all on the line. Um, you know, I, I play my hardest no matter what. Um, and that's enabled me to be successful. Um, I try to limit my excuses and make sure that, you know, if my shot's not falling, if I'm not playing well, then, you know, I'm impacting the game somewhere else. And that's why I think, you know, my rebounding numbers were much higher. Uh, you know, my, my, my points were much higher just because I was, I was given, I was put in a good position. You know, my teammates did a great job of finding me and, you know, basketball is easy. It was fun. It was simple. Um, and I think that's, you know, people kind of get lost in and yeah, I was, I was just been able to just enjoy myself and just compete at a high level. There also was a big time player that came in for his first year out there at that point. That's Maddie. And he obviously developed into, a, he really was a guy also went to the next level too. He's the guy that started playing with all the other elite five stars, started coming to play with him too. But did you expect him to be that special? Like, did you see him be a guy that Michigan State would heavily love on and a lot of big programs? Like, did you see him becoming that top 100 or top 25 in two-voice type of player? Yeah. So, Maddie came in as a freshman. Um, he didn't speak any English. No, no English. So, the guy Damien that we were just talking about, he had to translate um, everything for him in French. <laughs> so, he didn't, he didn't know one play. He didn't know, um, you know, any of the drills, nothing. And – but he, he didn't back down from anyone. You know, I know I, I was a, I was a senior at the time. Um, he was a freshman and I just, I just made sure to try to like kill him, you know, every practice, but that guy did not back down. Um, he tried to fight me in practice multiple times. Um, not afraid of anything, super hard worker, you know, and he just, he's just a good person. I mean, he just, every day he came in, he had a giant smile on his face. Um, you know, and I'm happy with all the success because he, he, he deserves it. You know, super humble, super kind. Um, he just works. You know, I think that's that's huge. And that's why he's able to, you know, have that much success. You know, and, and 
the, I mean, the body he has, I mean, he's just super athletic. Um, you know, even back then he was doing stuff. I was like, wow, like that's not even normal, you know, but I'm happy he got his coordination down, his footwork down because he used to be taking a bunch of steps <laughs> that he wasn't allowed to. He didn't even know. Um, but just seeing, you know, the player he is now, how much better he's gotten. Um, to me, to me, when when I was there, I could kind of see it. You know, there's no way that kid is that young and that good without playing basketball for a long time. And then you put five years of basketball under his belt and he's a, he's a five star recruit, you know. So, yeah, I, I, I could see it, but definitely not, you know, as big time as he is now. But I'm super happy for him. Absolutely. Well, it's kind of your recruiting process because, as we know, you choose Santa Clara, but I said you have a lot of schools in the mix for you. I know Columbia, like you said, was your first offer. You have Tulane in the mix for you, Pacific. Like, there's a good list of schools that are heavily pursuing you. So, who did it really come down to? Like, why was Santa Clara the school you chose? How'd you end up there? And what other schools are really making heavy push for you? Yeah. So, um, my final three schools um, was Santa Clara, uh, Princeton, and Tulane. I think throughout the recruiting process, I had upwards of over, I think, the 30 Division one offers. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember I had a list, it was massive. Um, but to me, you know, I, I had a good relationship with all the staff on all those things, all those teams. And to me, that was really important. Um, Princeton, it was just tough because they don't offer um, like athletic scholarships. Mm -hmm. So like I said earlier in the interview, I told my mom that like I didn't want her to pay a dime um, for like university. So that's kind of why I didn't choose Princeton. Um, and then, you know, it came down between Tulane and Santa Clara. Um, but Tulane, actually, I went on the visit and I love Tulane. And then right before my Santa Clara visit, uh, the coach of Tulane calls me. He's like, hey, um, like, we already gave the scholarship to someone else. We have no scholarships available. Mm -hmm. And then I kind of went into Santa Clara thinking, like, I'm very happy that this happened because it makes my life a lot easier. Mm -hmm. um, and then the second I – first of all, my relationship with the coaches were amazing. You know, I, I remember Herb showing up to um, a, a hoop group camp and like sitting courtside and following me throughout the entire day. And like for a head coach to do that um, in the middle of nowhere in New Jersey, I think is, or Pennsylvania, I'm not sure where it was. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's huge. You know, I had, I had the hoop group direct, director come up and be like, like the fact that a head coach is here is watching you, I think is really big time. And like, you should like take advantage of that. Um, so when I stepped foot on campus and he started talking to me and I got to see the campus, I got to see the players. Um, it was, it was a no brainer. Um, it was just probably one of the easiest decisions of my life. Um, and yeah, and I, and I knew that I was going to be able to play right away. You know, that, that was big for me as well. Um, I wanted to make sure that, you know, I went somewhere that I was able to compete for a spot um, and I was given an opportunity and the coaches gave, granted me that opportunity and I made the most of it. I know in the recruiting process, a lot of coaches would go out there and say, yeah, we're going to play a ton of minutes. Like you're going to get all this opportunity. And oftentimes it's not always the case. We see a lot of stories that's not always true. What did he expect for you, though? Because you started probably around 90% of your games your college career. Like, you started, I think, your 26 to 30 games your freshman year, and from there, every game except for senior night, pretty much. So, yeah. like, did you expect, did he expect for you to come in there and become that dominant, become a guy yet starting or heavily in rotation from day one? Like, what did yeah. you expect from you your freshman year? Sure. You know, one one thing that I really admire about the coaching staff here, um, that they, they, they don't promise playing time. Um, everything here is is earned, not, not given. So, um, it feels up to me. I think I earned a starting spot right away, you know, from day one, but, uh, it took, it took her like four days. It took coach like four days to realize <laughs> four games to realize it. And that's fine. You know, I, like I said, from the second, you know, we started coaching me, I had nothing but, you know, respect and admiration towards him. So, um, he's, he's, he's done a great job just, um, being honest with me, you know, I think that's huge. Um, making sure that, you know, that, he know, I know what to, well, I know what he wants, you know, I know like what kind of system we're playing, you know, what he expects from me. Um, yeah, it was actually funny because we, we had a meeting um, my freshman year. I mean, we, we, we didn't start off on a really good year. Um, mm -hmm. Kind of had a poor year and he kind of goes down the room and like he, he stumbles upon me. He's like, um, Joseph, like, wouldn't you say you're like, you're having a surprisingly well year? I'm like, no, I think I should be having a better year. Like, I'm not, like, I'm not happy with what I'm doing, you know? So I would, I would expect, I would say their expectations for me weren't as high um, as I thought they would be, but um, I definitely think that I've, I guess, surpassed those. So for you personally, I mean, obviously, you know, you're not going to game plan exactly the way every single moment of your college career has gone so far, but like in terms of not becoming an all-conference player by your senior year and 
you're in the top 10 in many different stat categories. You probably would have been a lot higher had you played the extra 10 or 11 games last year too, which you'll make up this year now. But like, did you expect yourself to become an all-conference guy, become a guy that's going to go down in Santa Clara history as one of the better players? And who knows how high you get up this year and what all records you can break. But like, did you expect all this to be in your future? For sure. You know, for me, my goal, as I said before, is to climb the ladder. You know, mm-hmm. if you look at my career, look at the way I've progressed. Um, you know, my first year was 10 points a game, second year, 13 points, third year, 14, 50, I mean, fourth year, 15, you know, I'm just steadily getting better and better. You know, even if you look at my accolades and my personal accomplishments, mm-hmm. sophomore year, honorable mention, junior year, second team, and then this year, first team, right? So just trying to, you know, work my way up, um, not, not let myself, you know, have a, have a bad game, have a bad year, a bad period, just you know, trying to do everything I can to just be consistent because I think that, you know, basketball is a sport about production. So you got to produce. And to me, it's all about being consistent and trying to produce as much as possible. And luckily I've done that. Um, and, and I continue, hopefully, you know, the goal is to keep on, you know, ro- hopefully, you know, break some records. But, you know, my main thing is just to, to win this year and to represent Santa Clara the best way I can. So throughout your three final years of high school at West Side, you only lose a couple games for your entire career out there. Your freshman year, obviously, was a lot of ups and downs, 11 wins, 20 losses. That's more than you had in three years combined. That could have been an easy job. Obviously, you're playing pretty decent overall, averaging double-digit points and whatnot, starting. But how did you handle the losing, and how did the team as a whole handle the losing? It's tough. You know, like you said, I went from, um, you know, being a top 10, a nationally ranked powerhouse, uh, losing, you know, not losing on home court once, um, to, you know, losing 20 games in a year. And it's not easy. You know, it's something that, you know, I didn't experience um, before. Um, But I think, you know, fighting through adversity is huge. Um, You know, our team, we we did our best, you know, with what we were given. Um, You know, all of us were disappointed of what happened. Um, You know, it wasn't easy. I wasn't, I'm not going to sit here and say I was proud of, you know, my personal compliments of starting because I would rather sit on the bench and have our team win 20 games and, you know, start and have us, win 10 you know so it was tough um you know but luckily we've gotten better over the years um there 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 hasn't been you know one doubt or one moment in my mind where I didn't want to play for Santa Clara you know I know I know a lot of guys uh after a down year like that and they have a successful year to think about transferring or something like that but um you know for me it was from the second I came to campus it was all Santa Clara all the time um and it will be like that you know for the rest of my life so um it was tough but, but you know I knew that I could make a change and kind of hope this year I'm kind of hoping to do what I did at Wasatch and kind of leave the program on great terms and hopefully jumpstart a rise in, you know, their performance and hopefully have have us ranked nationally. It kind of has been a trend of guys that from Canada also come to Santa Clara. As you mentioned, you're going to have, I think you said, six guys upcoming year. And we know by far the best player in program history, Steve Nash, who has a nice little correlation there to Canada as well. But it's kind of being a part of this program where you have a lot of familiarity with guys. Like you can kind of relate to guys within that program also the historic side too, like I said, Steve Nash, clearly we know he's done in his career and what he is now as a coach, but how big has that been for you? Like having that much familiarity and comfortableness, kind of just being around those other guys, how much has that helped you? It, it's huge. You know, it's huge. I feel, you know, maybe sometimes a little too comfortable. Uh, I feel like, I feel like I, I'm really at home. Seriously. Every time I come, to, you know, I call Santa Clara my home. Um, but it's huge. I mean, seeing all these Canadians, you know, being around the same coaching staff coming up on my fifth year, I think it's huge in college basketball. You know, not, not a lot of guys get to experience that. Mm-hmm. Um, so being comfortable and being able to, you know, help guys out, um, you know, talk to people, you know, help out with recruiting, um, you know, when people get to campus, make them feel comfortable. Um, I think it's really important. You know, I remember I, I did a really, really heavy job recruiting on, you know, Miguel and, and Jaden. Um, you know, I just want as many – Canadian guys here as possible just because, you know, I think that pipeline is so strong and, you know, I have so much um, hope and um, aspirations, you know, for, for, for guys from Canada. Um, so to me, seeing all these Canadians and, you know, and having me be a small part of that, I, I think it's huge. You know, I, I try to get our coaching staff to go down to Canada as much as possible, you know, just to recruit guys. Um, and yeah, it's paid off. So you know, just seeing that has been, you know, just, amazing for me 
Now, there's one team specifically that you always seem to have a great game against uh, your college career so far, and that's BYU. Your freshman year was by far your best game, 20 points. You had another 22 and 11 game your sophomore year. And every year, I mean, you have a lot of good games too against other teams, but it's very rare that you don't have a great game against BYU. So, you got to walk us through Like, what is it about you when you go and play BYU? Um, yeah, you know, I think the, the Utah thing is definitely there. I think my, my junior year I had, I think I had 28 and 12 that game. Um, mm-hmm. I guess BYU, at BYU. I just, I love playing in Utah. Um, you know, when you're there for three years and, you know, a school doesn't recruit you, you get kind of competitive. Um, you get just kind of like an edge to that game. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the, the staff there is doing a great job. Um, I know that that staff actually recruited me at Utah Valley. Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, I have nothing but, you know, love and appreciation for that staff. But every time, like, I see the Cougars, you know, I kind of, I get a little extra chip on my shoulder. Um, it, 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 it is personal. Um, but, yeah, I think that's what it is. You know, I just, I just enjoy playing in Utah. I love, you know, the people there are amazing. You know, they have, they have a great fan base that fires me up every time. And, um, yeah, it's, it, it's a lot of fun. I, I really do enjoy it. Uh, sophomore year is a much better team. You obviously have a big jump in your stats, but also the team as a whole, 16-15, over 500 now. And you guys also added a special point guard to Taj Edie, who now obviously did his thing after USC last year. But what was the addition like? Getting a guy of that caliber to come in there and help you guys win, how big was that for you guys? Yeah, Taj, Taj was huge. I mean, you see what he did at USC. Um, you know, Taj one of those guys that when he gets going, he gets going. You know, there was some games where I remember I would just, just like, staring off you know the stuff he was doing um he he was he, he, he actually came in the same year as me uh mm-hmm. he was he was a red shirt um and then i got to see him play on scout team and like like kind of go at us a little bit um and he was doing stuff that i just i just couldn't believe and i knew he was a heck of a talent a really good basketball player and i, I was just lucky to be around him and experience all that so now as a team like i said you have a big jump to over 500 now 16 15 much better season and you also have that big jump too. So can I say it's the ups and downs of your sophomore year? Yeah, it was tough. Um, you know, I think I had a, a big role that year as a sophomore um, mm-hmm. and I was ready for it. Uh, you know, there's definitely some games where, you know, I didn't compete the way I wanted to. And that happens every year, you know. Um, but I think I picked it up in conference. I think I ended up you know, playing a lot better in conference. Um, you know, and then from there, just kept on going uphill. Um the coaches put me in a good position. I kind of have to change my style of play a little bit. You know, I went from being a, like a heavy perimeter guy to, uh, you know, relying on back to the basket and, and, and post stuff. Um, so that's kind of how my game developed and changed. And, you know, since I got here, whatever the coaching staff told me and, you know, everything they instruct me to do, I just was all in for it. So that junior year is your best season as a whole, both for yourself, kind of your degree, but also as a team, 21 season, you also have a special freshman come in now. You guys are playing Diane with you with and Jay Williams. And kind of said, like adding in a guy of Jalen's caliber, we know how he's emerged, especially this past year. How big was that for you guys? And how's your guys bond grown over the past couple of years now? It's huge. It's huge. Jalen is a heck of a talent. You know, he's a really good player. Um, he's, he's kind of found himself in the system now. I think that first year he, he was f- trying to be comfortable, trying to fit in. Um, but, you know, last year, especially – towards the end part of the season, um, he, he, he found his, um, he found his rhythm and he, he found his game. You know, he's, he's a guy that, you know, should have the ball in his hands a lot. You know, he's heck of a talent, heck of a player, um, super athletic. You know, there's, there's not a lot of things he, he can't do. Um, and just seeing him progress and get better over time um, has been, has been really fun. Um, and I'm hoping that, you know, he, he continues to rise. You know, I think that um, he's going to have a huge part, you know, in, in our, in our success next season. And, you know, a lot of pressure is going to be on him to perform. But I think that, you know, he's going to do an excellent job and I have nothing but faith in him. Now, would you know he also has the extra year eligibility so he could play the five-year career as well? And I don't know how high you're going to get up in all the stat categories, but do you think there's a chance that he has more points than you, more assists, something like that? Do you think he's going to pass you in some records after you leave and he studies an extra year or so possibly? I hope. I really do. I mean, he's, I, I, I love the guy. I seriously do. You know, I, I, I hope he, you know, shatters all the records. You know, he, he's definitely good enough to do it. Um, and then if, he, if, if he's shattering all the records, that means Santa Clara is winning. So for me, that's a win-win, you know. So just having him definitely an assist. I think he could pass it. I think he probably already passed me. Uh, but, uh, yeah, no, I really hope he does. I mean, he's, he's a heck of a player. Um, you know, Santa Clara is lucky enough to get him for five years. Um, then I think he has the potential to break any record there is, you know, and um, 
I'm, I'm guessing he will. You know, I'm, I'm not too sure. Um, but, you know, I think he's an NBA talent, and I do see him playing in the NBA. And I think that um, if anyone were to do it, it would probably be him. Absolutely. Well, at that point, then you said earlier, like, you then had your hip thing you are looking at because COVID came into factor, and you have this long off season that pretty much the whole world had to deal with in terms of the lock-in. But as you said the hip thing, so kind of going back to that a little bit, like, is there a certain time that you remember it happening? Like, you started feeling comfortable? Did it just happen over time? Like, walk yeah, through so, the beginning stages of this hip injury. For sure. So, my whole life, I had bad, bad hip problems. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of, at the end of my junior year, I talked about it a little bit. But then, um, that off season we had COVID, um, I spent a lot of time in, in the gym trying to work on my mobility and my athleticism. Um, and then my hip, my hip kept on bothering me. It kept on locking up. And I kept on trying to do stretches and kind of loose, loosen it. Um, but it kept on getting worse. So I go back to Santa Clara in August and I tell my trainer, I'm like, Hey, um, my hip's bothering me. Like, can, can, can we get it checked out? Um, and then they gave me a bunch of stretches, a bunch of things to, you know, work on it. Um, then the more I would stretch it, the more it would hurt. So I told them like, Hey, like, this is not helping. This is getting worse. Um, then they said, okay, after the season, we'll take a look at it and then we'll see. Um, so that whole year, you know, the, the more I tried to stretch, the more I lifted, the more I ran, the more it hurt. So I was, I was at a place where it's like, okay, like I need to compete. I need to be in the weight room. I need to, you know, be at practice every day. But then again, the more I do that, you know, I can't really play. Right. Cause I'll be like, by the time games start, like I'll, I can't move. Um, so I would say in, in, in early, early August, middle of August is when I realized that, you know, there's something serious going on. Um, and then I got a, I got an x-ray right after the season um, in, in March. And yeah, they were like, you have a problem with your hip and needs to be addressed as soon as possible. And so now that you said you go on this whole process now today, so you, I know we're talking a little bit before I started, but so you think you're going to be ready to go for the season? Like what's the update and what's kind of the rehab process going to look like for you? For sure. Yeah. You know, so it's going to be a slow, long rehab. Um, you know, the hip is a kind of in a sensitive area, mm -hmm. you know, it's a lot of, a lot of weight bearing. Um, so not much I can do right now. You know, I've been hobbling around on, on the crush back there. Um, just trying to get, you know, get to the cafeteria to get some food, um, nothing crazy. Mm -hmm. Um, so hopefully, you know, in a couple months I'll be able to, you know, start moving around a little bit more. Um, but I should be back before season. You know, I expect, I expect to be hundred percent, um, long before the first, first game. Um, so yeah, you know, I'm ready. I'm excited. You know, this, this whole recovery, this whole, um, six month process will be about changing my body. Um, and making sure that, you know, when I come back, I'm at my body at an elite level. And from there, we'll just see what happens. So let's head to this whole first all team WCC this past season. I want to head to the season a little bit. And you guys go 12 and eight. Obviously, it's a very up and down season for everybody. COVID has not been easy. And you guys had to go play in a whole other facility. You guys were running on campus. So you got to walk us through this year. Like it was not an easy year for you whatsoever. I know that. So walk us through how you handled this entire year with the hip injury, the COVID effects. Like what was your life? It, it was it was rough you know it was not easy uh we, we come back to santa clara in august um no no students around um just us women's basketball women's volleyball um you know we're going through this whole first month two months where we can't even have contact in practice so we're just doing individual workouts um the season starts we play our first three home games you know like for me personally i had three really impressive games mm -hmm. um i was averaging upwards of over 20 points um and then we get moved to Santa Cruz. So the whole county shuts down. And then we got forced to, to move to Santa Cruz for two months um, and live out, of a, uh, live out of a suitcase, um, out of a duffel bag, and practice in the G League facility. Um, and that was it, was, it was tough. I mean, it, it wasn't easy. Um, luckily, we were all together. Um, but... I mean, I definitely don't see myself going back to that facility, not because it's not a good facility, just because of what we went through when we were there. Um, but yeah, and then, you know, after two months, a lot of just traveling, a lot of just being in the hotels and doing nothing. Um, we got we got to go back to Santa Clara. And the day we go back to Santa Clara, uh, we get into COVID protocol. So we're shut down for 10 days, two weeks. Mm -hmm. So we go from being at Santa Clara go to a hotel for two months, come back, get shut down right away, play three games and then conference tournament time. So it was, it was really sporadic. You know, you, one thing that was tough for me is that, you know, I thought it was my last year. So 
um, having games get canceled. I remember I used to go back, you know, I had tears in my eyes. Um, we, we didn't even have a senior night. And I, for me, that was devastating because, you know, I put so much into the program. I put four years um, of blood, sweat and tears that, you know, I wanted, um, you know, I wanted there to be like a, a last, last game I could play at Santa Clara that I could be proud of um, and that I knew was my last game. Um, so not having that, I mean, was devastating, but, you know, that was just fuel to the fire. Um, and then when we got to Vegas, uh, uh, yeah, we just, you know, battled as hard as we could. And here we are. So all along, we know that I think they said the role was going to come in. We just did a free year this past season. Like, I think that was the, more towards the beginning of the year. Like, did you at that point in time say, you know, I might really look into utilizing this. I really do want to come back another year. Was that more so after the year because of the way it ended? Like, when did you start saying, okay, I really think I want to stay here from when actually going to utilize that role? Sure. Well, to me, coming back to Santa Clara, um, there's always a possibility. I mean, I just, I just enjoy being here too much to, you know, not consider it. Um, but I think I was definitely ready uh, to move on. Um, you know, I felt like I was, I was, uh, at, like, I felt like I was able to compete at, at the professional level. Um, I think that, you know, talking to my family, talking to, you know, a bunch of different people that, um, you know, I've, I've done enough in college basketball to set myself up to, uh, to play professionally. And then throughout the year, you know, I had several talks with coaches, uh, teammates, players, um, just to see, you know, uh, you know, what the right, what the right move would be for me, you know, cause it's not as easy a decision as it seems. Um, but then, you know, once I found out about the hip thing, um, once I got into the master's program that I wanted to get into, um, it was a pretty easy decision. Um, you know, my health and safety is kind of, uh, my top priority. Um, so, you know, once I figured out that I can get this issue taken care of as soon as possible, um, you know, coming back was kind of the, the next step. And we do see with a lot of guys that they kind of finish their four-year career at a certain school and they move on, transfer to another place. Even some shocking news like we saw yesterday, Remy Martin, that had a historic all-time great ASU career and he's moving on to Kansas now. Like, there's been a lot of stories that might even shock people. Was that ever a consideration for you? Like, did you ever say, maybe I could go somewhere else higher, maybe I could go play here or there? Like, did that ever come across your mind at any point, even not even this year, but any point in your career? Yeah, you know, joking around, you know, after, like, being first team all conference or after, you know, being um, – having the freshman career I have or having a career I had in general, you know, the possibility was definitely there. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm not, I'm not the type of person to, to do that. You know, I'm, I'm pretty loyal. You know, I like to um, stay in the program that I began with. Um, you know, if you know me, you know, that's what I'm all, all about. You know, that's, that's how my family raised me. Um, so I didn't, I don't think I've ever considered it. Uh, maybe jokingly once in a while to bring it up, but mm-hmm. deep down, like not once, you know, I wanted to, to have some place to call my home and, you know, to, to have a place where I can go back to in 10, 15 years and be like, Hey, you know, look what I've done here. Look at, you know, all the great things that's happened to Santa Clara. And, you know, I wanted to be a part of a community that, you know, to me is second to none. Um, so to me, to me, it was bigger than basketball. You know, it wasn't just about basketball, it was about education. It was about, you know, my social life. It was about, um, you know, my family, you know, the, the bonds I made. And, you know, when you, when you encounter all that stuff, um, Santa Clara has been the only thing on my mind since day one. I'll stay on topic a little bit. Obviously, it's been a hectic year for the portal because of the new rule where you can just go to somewhere else right away. And yeah. even some of the guys we've talked about that the course this interview have already moved on, like Kobe's obviously moved on to his yeah. nation point. Like, just trying to follow this, like, seeing all the movement, I think it's upwards of 1,600 players now it's done it. Like, how crazy has it been just as a player looking at the rosters changing the way they're changing right now? It's crazy. You know, for me, you know, my whole thing is looking at our conference just because – you know, if you know college basketball, it's all about conference play, right? So, you know, some I know Portland, their whole team transferred, every single player, you know. Um, seeing, you know, USF get, you know, a bunch of transfers, you know, some of them um, I used to play with, actually. Um, and that's that to me is, like, insane, you know, seeing uh, Gonzaga hit the portal like that. Um, all these teams are just, you know, utilizing it. And, you know, a lot of people think it's bad. Um, a lot of people think that, you know, it's kind of hurting college basketball. But, um the coaches are adapting, you know, they're finding out new ways to um, get their team successful. You know, it's a lot of turmoil, a lot of movement. Uh, college basketball is in a totally different place than it was um, a few years ago. But, you know, I think it's exciting. You know, we're going to see a lot of new faces, different jerseys. I mean, it's going to be hectic next year. And, you know, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Well, a few things before I let you go, my last thing related to school so far is, when you look at one team specifically in your conference, as you just mentioned, Gonzaga, who 
We know what they've become in the powerhouse they are. I know typically we see a lot of people refer to, well, their in-conference play isn't that strong. Everyone always makes the same thing. Well, they're not in a big conference. They're not playing against competition. Those that watched you guys know that clearly BYU is a good team. I think they still get some more respect nationally, but LMU is a great team. You guys have a lot of talent. Like, there's a lot of good things. San Francisco is a great school. Like, there's a lot of good schools in the conference. So how do you kind of take that, though? When you hear a lot of people kind of shining down on you guys and a lot of the teams at the conference, how do you guys take that in? Yeah, I mean, there's nothing we could do about it. You know, I'm not – I'm not too caught up on what people say. Um, you know, I kind of try to ignore that and, you know, move past it. But, I mean, I think that we got to do a better job of proving ourselves. Um, you know, I think that there is some reason why people are saying it. And, you know, I got to as a team, we got to look ourselves in the mirror and say, listen, if, if that's the reality and if that's what people are thinking, we got to just, you know, get rid of all the doubt. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we haven't had the success that we wanted to, and we're definitely, you know, looking to change that. Um, so, my whole thing is just to prove them wrong. You know, we nothing else to do, but, you know, to, to go out there and, you know, make a historic run. I think that if we do something like that, if we do, we feel what BYU is doing, if we, if we do what, you know, St. Mary's has historically done, then, you know, I think our conference can be power five. You know, you see all these teams restocking, getting better. Um, everyone in our league is pretty much, you know, above 500, just seeing um, all of the talent and uh, the great coaches in our league and just seeing, you know, how much has changed since I first got there. Um, it's been crazy, you know, and I do see the WCC continuing to rise, continuing, uh, you know, and eventually inserting themselves in, you know, one of the top six or seven conferences uh, in the nation. So how excited do you get when you go play against there? Because they always have a great big man down low. Like you've gone against Drew Timmy, you've gone against Rui Hachimura, you've gone against guys like Brandon Clark. You're going to go up against guy like Chet Holgram next year, the number one player in the country. Like how excited does it make you to go up against those kind of talented guys year in, year out? Yeah, it's fun. You know, I love, you know, playing the best competition. That's why I play basketball you know, to play against the best. Um, and I've been fortunate to do that, you know, especially with a team like Gonzaga. Um, you know, every time we play, I always feel like I'm guarding an NBA prospect. And I think that's like, that's what I live for. You know, that's, mm -hmm. that's why I chose to play basketball to be able to, um, you know, compete against those guys and hold my own. Um, and I've done that and um, I have nothing but, you know, respect, and the, you know appreciation for you know how good those guys are and how good Gonzaga is, but um, at the end of the day, you know I'm always going to bet on myself. I'm always going to out there and compete my hardest, and then whatever happens, happens. Absolutely. Well, you look back now at your entire four-year career so far. What would you say is your favorite game or your favorite memory of your career so far? Oh, that's tough. Um, my, I, I would say I got two favorite memories. Um, one would be uh, the win at St. Mary's uh, when I hit when I hit the game winner. Uh, I think that's a, that's a huge one mm -hmm. uh, just because it hasn't done in so long. And, you know, being a part of that was just so much fun. Um, the next one would definitely be um, USF on, uh, on senior night, um, my, my sophomore year, uh, just beating them. I mean, it's just the rival school, mm -hmm. um, just being a part of that is just crazy. And then the last one would be USC at home and, and double overtime. Anytime you go to a double overtime game and you beat a power five conference, I mean, it's worth celebrating. So, you know, those three were definitely uh, the, the top of the list. Absolutely. Well, sometimes I wrap up discussing is building a legacy for yourself. And so far, you've cemented a great one so far to this point. But by the time you are playing this game of basketball, what do you want to remember for for your chief, both on and off the court? Yeah, I think the biggest thing for me is I want to remember it as, you know, a good basketball player, but even better person. Um, I want to make sure that, you know, um, people that are involved in the Santa Clara community, um, you know, are aware of, you know, who I am and what I've done. Um, being able to be remembered as someone, you know, who, who gave it all, who gave it his all, um, you know, didn't take one game off, uh, competed as hard as he could um, and made Santa Clara the top priority. You know, I wish, I kind of wish people, you know, loved and appreciated, you know, Santa Clara the way I did. Um, and I do just because um, it's such a beautiful place and, there's so much to offer here. Um, and yeah. Absolutely. And my final thing for you, give the country your three biggest goals you have set for your final year at the Santa Clara. Yeah. So the, the three goals I have for Santa Clara this year uh, is to make the NCAA tournament, mm -hmm. um, to beat Gonzaga. Mm -hmm. um, and the last one's tough. And to finish top three in the conference. Absolutely, man. Well, I definitely appreciate you taking time. Come on today. I'm excited to see what God got next for you, man, and keep doing your thing. Appreciate you, Zach. Thank you, man. Of course, you're welcome, man. God bless.
Yes, sir.